In this video, we're going to take a look at the differences between tangent and curvature constraints when we're talking about fillets and lofts. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to cover a topic that came up in one of the comments of our plastic part design series. And it was asking the question about what is the difference between using a loft with a really heavy tangency influence and using a fillet. So I thought I would create an example where we could take a look at fillets using both tangency and curvature continuity, as well as lofts using the same. And then I have one that I'll show you my sort of ideal workflow to make this geometry. So as we're looking at these designs, you can go to the description of the video and you can download the data set to take a look at it. Now, it's a little bit tricky for us to, to really talk about these. There's a lot of nuances and they're really based on the curvature that you're using. So I think first we should understand how these were created. So the very top of these designs are all completely flat. Now, when we have some flat geometry, it means there is no radius of curvature. If you continue to extend it out, it will just go on forever and never intersect itself. However, anytime you have a radius of curvature, that means that as it extends out, it will eventually, ideally, come back and reconnect with itself or it will continue on a different path. Now, when we think about that, when we're using tangency, what we mean is we have a tangent relationship with the radius of curvature at that intersection and it'll continue going off straight. When we use a curvature continuity, what we're saying is that we're taking a look at the radius of curvature and we're using that along with the tangency to control whatever new face we're creating. So those are the two main ways in which we can control the continuity between surfaces. So let's first talk about tangency versus curve in a fillet. Now, when we're talking about tangency and curvature, the topic is based upon continuity. Now, we have a couple of different levels of continuity that we can talk about. G0 means that we have a coincident relationship between our edges. G1 means that we have a tangent relationship. G2 means that we have a curvature relationship. And G3 means that we are taking into account the tangency direction, the radius of curvature, but also the change in the curvature. So the acceleration as we get up to and away from our edge. When we're trying to design something and we're thinking about whether we're going to use a fillet or if we're going to create a loft to blend things together or potentially a sweep, there are a lot of different topics that are sort of underneath that and different reasons why we would choose one over the other. Now with Fusion 360, sweeps don't give you the available option to use things like tangency or curvature continuity. So right away, you're only looking at things like guide rails or guide surfaces, and then you're using a profile, which can be the edge of a surface, a solid, or a sketch. But we're kind of omitting that from this discussion here. What we're really talking about is the use of modify fillet and the use of create and loft. Um, I'm also going to talk about patch a little bit at the very end when I show you my sort of ideal workflow. So first we have our tangent fillet. Now the tangent fillet here is actually one in which we use a tangency and we can control it with either constant radius of curvature or we can use cord length, which is going to determine the distance between the two edges. Now, if you have a design where the curvature is changing or the angle between the faces is changing, using a cord length can help you keep a consistent width fillet. When we use constant, it's gonna use 10 millimeter radius across the entire thing. For the intersection between three edges, we can use the corner type rolling ball, which will create this triangular patch in the corner, or we can use the setback. Now, typically when we're talking about more cosmetic applications, the setback is generally a better looking option. But we are using G1 continuity with a tangent relationship. When we go to the next fillet, that is the curvature continuous fillet. Now this one is built in the same way. It's using a constant radius, but it's using curvature continuity, which is again G2. So we're looking at a smooth transition, taking into account the radius of curvature. So what does that really mean for us in terms of this design? To view this, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the curve and the tangent loft, and I'm gonna bring my curvature map analysis on. 
When I look at curvature map analysis, what we're doing here is we're looking at the radius of curvature. Now there are three different ways in which we can do this. Inside of the curvature map, we can show the Gaussian, principal minimum, and principal maximum. If we go to principal maximum, we're going to get a display that goes between green and red. And one thing you'll notice with a tangency is that the red starts exactly at our intersection edge. This means that from the second we transition from our flat surface to our fillet, we're going to have a constant radius of curvature. When we take a look at this with our curvature continuity, you can see here that the green carries past that edge and blends into the red. If I go back to our Gaussian display and I modify the scale, you'll notice that this transitions between multiple colors. Now what this is telling me is that I'm getting the transition from the radius of curvature on either faces and I'm blending it into these corners. So from a product design standpoint, this is going to be a better option because it allows me to carry the reflections and the shadows across these edges better. When we have something like a tangency constraint, we're going to see harder or sharper edges across those seams. And this is generally something you want to avoid when you have a consumer product or something that you really want to be careful and mindful of those reflections and those shadows. But one issue that comes up with this, and you'll notice it here, is in this corner blend, you can see the curvature is changing rapidly right at that edge. Now, we can play around with our scale and we can reduce this, and you can see at some point it goes away when the scale is relatively low. But when the scale is higher, the higher we get that scale, you can see that we do have some potential issues across those seams. So let's go ahead and bring that back down. And let's talk about zebra stripes, because zebra stripes is another tool that's important to us. When we look at zebra stripes, unless we lock these, you can see that they're based on our view and our coordinate system. So they're going to move around, and we need to use this to our advantage. What we really want to look for is what happens when these zebra stripes cross the edges. When we're looking at tangency, you can see here that we've got a little bit of a jump. So on the other side, it looks fairly smooth, but from this orientation, as we rotate around, what we're seeing is a jump in curvature. When we look at the same thing, when we're talking about the curvature continuity here, it's not as apparent, but as we move this around, you can still see that we're getting a little bit of a jump here. And that's going to be a result from looking at the curvature map analysis and seeing that sort of distortion right at that edge. One thing that we could do is we could take this face and delete it and patch it and uh, hopefully get a better result, but that's I not an ideal situation. You don't want to create a feature, delete it, and then try to remake it or rework it. Depending on what your end goal is, the surface quality here might be fine for you. It might be perfect. You might not have to do anything, but it's just important that we identify those differences. Next, I'm going to turn on the lofts, and these were created a little bit different because the vertical edges were filleted first and then the upper sections were lofted. Now, the vertical edges, this was created with a fillet using curvature continuity and this one was using tangency. And then the blends or the lofts up at the top were done using a curvature continuity and a tangency. So if we turn our curvature map analysis back on, you'll notice that it looks really good across here. And the corners actually look fairly decent. Curvature continuity, you can see again, the green is blending over those edges. But in the corners, we have a lot of interesting geometry here. Now, you might not instantly be able to see this when we're looking at it just in Fusion 360 with the reflections. But one thing you'll notice is that as this light source gets to that corner, you'll notice it kind of stops and then part of it disappears. So you can see right there about where the light is, part of it disappears. And when we bring back our curvature map analysis, that happens right where we see this edge here. So these are things that we need to be mindful of. And when we're building out surfaces like this, oftentimes the transition around corners is problematic. So one of the things I like to do is I like to be mindful of how far my surfaces are going. And anytime I need to change directions, I'll try to create that with a new surface. So my ideal workflow for this is to use my loft, use curvature continuity, but instead of doing it completely across that corner, 
what I'll do is I'll allow it to build and then I will remove a portion of the corner. And in this case, I used a surface patch to clean it up. So if I go into my curvature map analysis and I change it to the Gaussian and I bring this down, you'll notice that again, we're having some potential issues at these edges. But one thing you'll note is that at the edges, we don't have the drastic change in color. We're not seeing the reds and the pinks. We are seeing the yellows and greens and they are jumping at these edges. So they are still problematic, but it's not quite as bad as it was originally. And when we bring it down, you'll notice that right in the corner, we don't have any jagged edges or lines. So we're doing a much better job controlling the curvature directly in the corner. If I turn this off and I just look at the light in there, you can see that the light doesn't sort of disappear at a sharp edge like it did originally. So that means we're controlling it across um, each of these. So the transition as it goes across this seam looks pretty good. The transition across this seam looks pretty good. And the one down here looks pretty good. And these are all the things that we want to be mindful of is how the light travels across each of our surfaces. This is something that you can also do by navigating into the render workspace. You can rotate it around because the, the shading is a little bit different in here. You can play around with your setup. You can use this position and you can rotate your light source. And then you can move your, uh, your object around and, and kind of see. You can also go to the environment and you can pick another environment. So for example, skylight. Even if we're not using that background, skylight will give us some lines. There's also a grid light in here. And the grid light will also give us um, some additional lines that will help us identify these. So I'm going to be using the skylight option here. I'm going to close that. And then as I rotate this around, what we're looking to see is what the light does on these corners, how it goes through these corners, and, and how it sort of is transitioning across those edges. Those are all going to be the important things. And even though we had some potential issues across this edge, they're not really apparent with the reflections. If we bring back some of the other bodies, such as the tangent fillets, and we play around with these as well, what you can do is just rotate this around. And what you'll notice with the tangent fillet is that the light is ending directly at this edge. So you can see as we rotate it around, the light doesn't carry over that edge. It sort of stops there and wraps around. And that's because we're going from something that has curvature to something that's completely flat. When we look at this using curvature continuity in this middle option here, you can see that the edge is right here, but the light isn't stopping right at the edge. As it gets close, you can see it's starting to feather away until it has no, uh, no curvature on the top. So you're not getting that harsh edge as much as you are a more softer transition. It's still not perfect because we still have to deal with some inconsistencies in the corner. But again, they're not very apparent, especially with this light source, it looks okay. But these are the kinds of things that we need to be mindful of and we need to figure out what's important to us in terms of the way that we're dealing with light, shadows and reflections and the way that we're working with these in our products. This is a great way for you to play around with the different options in Fusion 360. And you can always go in and use in canvas rendering, which starts ray tracing. So it, what it's doing is it's looking at each pixel inside of our design space here in the canvas. And it's calculating what the light is doing, how it's bouncing around. And the longer you let this run, the more iterations, the more accurate it'll be. And it's essentially the same as creating a rendered image. But what we're doing is we're, we're watching it live. And then we can sort of rotate this around and we can figure out where you know good, a good orientation is and get a really good idea as to how the reflections differ based on our design path. So again, you can see that right at the edge, we're sort of getting the light or the shadowing to disappear. Over here, we're getting a much more gradual blend. And this one here, we've got some inconsistencies right in the middle, but overall it looks pretty good, except for there's a random highlight that happens right in this corner. So if I was looking at these three designs and I had to make a choice, I would pick this one here simply because the, the shading and the way that the light transitions across these edges looks a little bit better. And again, these are very minute differences. It's very hard for us to really get a good idea, but it's something that you always want to consider and play around with when you're working on your own designs. You can really tell a lot working directly here in the design workspace and you can sort of rotate these around, but just keep in mind that the shading that happens here is a little bit different than it is in the rendering workspace. 
So at this stage, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. This is a really big topic, and I actually recorded two other videos on this, and I just didn't progress with them because we were 30, 40 minutes in, and it just keeps going and going and going. So if this is an important topic, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a surface mastery course, similar to the Fusion Forms Mastery, where we start to pick at these topics little by little, um, because it really is a lot to unpack. And if I'm being completely honest, the surface tools in Fusion 360 have a little bit of room for improvement. They're, they don't always work how I would expect them or want them to work. So we have to do a few workarounds. So it's, a, it's less than ideal. But again, these are the tools that we have to work with and we need to understand what we're getting out of them, what our restrictions are, and what some of the workarounds will be. So at this stage, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.